Hey everyone, Justin with Everything Aquarium here. We've got another aquarium video right now. You're watching it live. Today we're going to be hooking up the CO2 injection on the 3.7 gallon cube back there. So follow along with me the best you can. This is going to be quite a project for me just because I don't have any script. I do this all off the top of my head, so it's 100% genuine. Everything you see come out of my mouth is right off the top of my head most of the time. And that's just who I am. So follow along with me if you can. If you can't, I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes I kind of stumble over things and you know how it goes. So just doing the best I can. I hope you guys enjoy this video. We're gonna break things down as much as I can. And uh, yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. And uh, let me set up a table real fast and we'll jump into the video. All right, folks, here we are. We got the little table set up here with all the things that way you can see pretty much everything you need to have to get this kit going. Um, and I guess I should say before we start, it's not really exclusive to this kit, so I'm not going to name the brand. Um, this is the, I want to say it's like a 1.2 liter thing. So my measurements may be different from yours depending on what type of generator kit you have. So uh, follow along with everything else besides the exact measurements. You're going to want to follow your manufacturer specifications for that. And I wanted to say that twice. Follow your manufacturer's specification for your correct solution and mixture combination to uh, create CO2 because mine may be different than yours based off size and a couple of the uh, factors that go into that But anyways your basic things you're gonna need are something to kind of use as a funnel which obviously is that plate We got a drop checker here, which real quick that basically turns from Blue to green to yellow depending on how much dissolved CO2 you have in the water column And you put this fluid in there, and that's what does that Citric acid and baking soda are going to be your two dry ingredients and then some water is going to be your third ingredient that's going to create your CO2 mixture as you, uh, um, as they react with each other. It is a endothermic reaction, which is a cold reaction, I want to say. I'm not a scientist, so I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, I have a syringe here just to kind of help uh, fill up the bubble counter and stuff. Um, that aids in that. Obviously, you're going to have a scale to weigh out your two ingredients there, citric acid and baking soda. I have a measuring cup, um, not specifically for the measurement, but just to scoop and pour. And we have our electronic solenoid here, which is going to electronically shut on and off. And that is going to be plugged into a smart plug. So this is going to be a smart system, automatically turns on and off every day with the lights in accordance to that. Um, we have some CO2 tubing here. Um, I want to stress this is not airline tubing. This is CO2 rated, which is, you know, up to a certain pressure or whatever. Um, this one might actually say, eh, I'm not seeing it, but I bought this online and I also have a check valve here, as you can see, in line. And we're going to cut this probably and, and do something with it. Um, other than that, I have the tank itself, which you've already seen. I have a cup to put my mixtures in there. And then we have a CO2 diffuser, arguably one of the most important pieces of equipment when it comes to this is a good CO2 diffuser. Pull this out real fast so you can take a look at it. This is the Neo diffuser from Aqua Neo or something like that. It's from Boost Plant. And I got the tiny version because it's a very tiny tank. If you can see that there, very small. It's almost a air stone material or like cork kind of material. I'm not 100% sure. But we'll hook all that up and I'll show you kind of as I go the best I can. Um, I guess the first thing we're going to do is find out a spot for our, our uh, drop checker here. Figure out exactly where we want to put that and then go from there. So we'll do that now. Depending on what type of drop checker you get and what type of uh, solution you have, the amount of drops per the drop checker is going to vary, but you can kind of eyeball it. This one claims 15, so what we're going to do is turn it upside down, take our solution, and count 15. And there's 15. We'll kind of turn it down to let the air come out. Give it a little flick, get that bubble. And then that's what they recommend you to have. See, in my opinion, I don't think that's full enough. So I like to do usually double. I've had this drop checker, so I know specifically that's what I like to do. So I'll add in another 15. Yep, 
You just don't want to extremely overdo it, but as long as it's mostly, you don't want it to be super full, but you know what I'm saying, mostly filled up, then you should be good. So that's about where I like it. I could probably take out a little bit, but for now, we'll kind of settle with that. And then uh, we're gonna find a spot in the tank for this. I'm thinking I'm going to probably tuck it back in the corner back here somewhere, just because I want it to be as far away from the diffuser as possible too. That way we're not uh, properly pumping CO2 directly into this itself. So I'll make sure all my little air drops or air bubbles are out of there. We got a nice solid pool of uh, DKH solution. And I'm gonna just take this and set it straight in like this. Obviously it comes with a little suction cup. You don't wanna put it in at an angle or nothing like that because then you could get water in there and you don't wanna have water go up in there, but you wanna have it just kind of create a gas pocket, air pocket, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna bring it over here and just kind of suction it right into place there. And now for me, that's good enough because I can see it. It's about where I want it. Sorry if my big head's in the way, but you get the idea. It's in there, I can see it, it does me good. And uh, that's what matters. So yeah, we got the drop checker in there. Next step is kind of prepping the area of where you want the system to go. Depending on where you are, you might want to make it super clean or you might just want to throw it in there. Obviously I'm kind of trying to be clean with it, but at the end of the day, I also just want it to work. So let's set something up. Actually what I decided I'm going to do now um, is set up the reaction inside of the CO2 tank. So we're going to measure out our, our uh, products here, our chemicals, whatever you want to call them, our materials. I'm going to take off the, just unscrew the regulator right from the top there. Make sure this all looks good. Keep everything in shape here. I'm going to make sure your um, O-ring isn't cracked or breaking or anything like that. That way you have no leaks. And then first thing we're going to do is add our citric acid and on mine specifically I'm going to add 200 grams of citric acid, 200 grams of baking soda and 300 milliliters of water. So the first thing we're going to do is weigh out our citric acid, excuse me. So we need to set our scale to the grams unit and tear it out just for good measure. Sorry about the background noise, that's the dogs outside. And then we're going to put our cup on. We see that it weighs around 34 grams. Pull it off, just double check. 34, 35, that's fine. Gram off isn't gonna hurt anything much. I like to be precise, but that's good. And then we'll tear it, that way it doesn't weigh the cup. And we will put our citric acid up. And the citric acid is actually pretty easy enough just to pour, so I'm gonna pour it right in there until we hit that 200 gram mark. I just like to watch that scale go up. Just take your time, no, no rush. Good enough. Not a couple over, I'll be a stickler and take out a couple of grams. And I'll just reweigh it to make sure everything's good. And we can take out one more, why not? Really, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but that's just me, OCD, so. Close enough, I took out enough, I know it's right around here. It'll probably switch if anything. So, one thing I learned with this is when you add this mixture, you do not want to shake the dry ingredients together. You want to just add it at an angle, kind of. And I'll try to do that on camera as best I can. We're gonna bring it up here. And with this, we kind of just wanna just slowly tap it in there. Actually, I am going to use the paper plate for a funnel. So without making a mess, hopefully, I'm just going to slowly dump this down into there. Taking my time to not make a giant mess. This is going to be a long video, folks, so I hope you can stick to the end. Because we do got a little bit of exciting news if you're watching at this point. So, yeah, hang around to the end. We got our... Citric acid in there, we'll shake that up itself a little bit just to level it out. But we do not want to shake the baking soda into the citric acid. It's going to cause it to react way too fast when we put the lid on. 
So I'm gonna weigh out this baking soda real fast off camera, just cause I don't think you need to sit there and watch that. And then we'll come back after we've added the baking soda. We got our baking soda in there. And now we're going to add our water. So we need to switch over to milliliters. We're gonna add 300 milliliters. Again, we're gonna put our cup on. We're going to tear it out again, just to make sure it's at zero. Take it off, double check. And this is just right from the tap, cool water. You don't want to use hot or anything, just nice cool water. And we're going to add 200, excuse me, 300 milliliters of water. Hopefully I got 300 in here. Oh, right on the edge. All right, and this is where I like to use my syringe. I can come out and suck out a decent amount. And then just a couple drops at a time, because water you want to have pretty accurate, right to 300, just like that. Just where I want it. And now when adding this, this is where you kind of want to be ready and be quick, because it's going to start to react immediately. Again, it's not a scary reaction or a big reaction or anything. It's not harmful, so you don't have to worry about that. But just want to not lose as much. You want to you want to let as little CO two escape as possible. So as I'm adding this water, I'm going to have the tank itself on an angle, and have that water going in slowly, of course, and then I'll have that regulator ready to put on. With that being said, I'm going to kind of put this on an angle here, take this water, and then just slowly pour. You'll hear it start to fizz up, that's normal. Your reaction is starting to happen, so get all your draw, all your water in there while it's on an angle. Insert your regulator, and you can hear it hissing a little bit. That means that you're building pressure already, which is good. And just kind of crank that down, not too tight, I shouldn't say crank it down, but get it tight enough to where it feels good. And then you can stand it up. And I like to give mine a little twirl. You don't need to shake it, just a little twirl to get all those ingredients mixed. Just like that and we can watch on our regulator as we slowly start to build pressure um, with this proper mixture we're gonna get to about 20 kg per C M, whatever it is I don't know um, in PSI what that is but we're gonna build to the correct range it always gets about to that 20 line there if you can tell um, usually a little bit above and we'll kind of let that do its thing as we set up the rest of the co2 line and stuff like that so for now, we're gonna let that sit and get all the other stuff set up. So now I'm just gonna work my diffuser into my CO2 tubing. CO2 is very rigid. Tubing is very rigid, so kind of angle it how you want it before you get it put in there or else it's gonna wanna bend and stuff and not be on the, the exact way you want it. Actually, <laughs> speaking of making mistakes, let's actually put the suction cups on first before we decide to insert our diffuser into the tank. Now we can go ahead and insert our diffuser that we have now that we have our suction cups on there. You can insert that diffuser where you want it. Now I'm gonna kind of just stage mine. I'm not actually gonna cut my line because I'm gonna use this for a future project. And the less money I have to spend on new airline the better. I'm gonna go around this light behind like this. Because I'm gonna tuck that right into the Casing the light here. And I want you genuinely, generally want your CO2, hopefully you can see this by the way, um, however you're injecting it to be as low to the surface or to the substrate as possible. That way you can get the maximum amount of time the bubbles stay down in the water. I'm going to put mine damn near touching the substrate. And we'll adjust all this later and stuff too, you know, just to make sure we got it dialed, dialed in right. That should be good for now. And then we'll just kind of keep it in that area for now until we get our bubble counter going and stuff. And we'll uh, check back up in just a second. So bear with me here. What I'm going to do now is come down here. Take my socket, my smart, smart smart socket, find a spot for it, which is probably gonna be 
in the middle of this power strip here. If I can get it to fit. Might have to move one of these. Uh, let's see. That one should be good. There we go. I'm going to plug my power adapter for the CO2 solenoid in. I don't actually have the smart plug set up right now, so I'll have to set it up in a few minutes here um, with the schedule and all that. But for now, we'll just leave that. I'm going to bring down my tank. As you can see, it's got a nice frost line on there where the mixture is actually, or where the reaction is actually taking place. So just give that another little mix. You don't want to do it too much to where it spews up and gets inside of the regulator. And I'm going to bring that down here. I'm going to put it more toward this tank here just because I like it there. And I'm going to grab my water with my syringe. And I'm going to fill up my drop counter, or not drop counter, excuse me, my bubble counter. Because we need to hook up our airline vent still. So it's just water I got in here, straight water. No problem. And we're going to just fill it up almost all the way to the top. Sorry if you guys can't see, I'm literally just filling this little tube. You'll see in just a second. So hopefully you can see that, but I filled that up right here. And we're going to take our other end of our airline tube, go through our nut here, and then put the airline tube onto our barb here. A line tube is rigid, so we got to use some strength. Get it nice and seated, square on there. Screw that on. And then crank it down nice and tight. And then I'm actually going to pull this out, screw it onto here, like so. Because you can't really spin this with the airline tube attached to it, everything's kind of locked into place. And we'll quick connect fit, quick, quick connect fittings. You can see it just clicks right in there and it locks them into place. I got my needle valve closed right now, so there shouldn't be any airflow. Uh, very minuscule, if any at all. I'm actually going to bring you guys down here real fast. Let me uh, get you a better angle, a little bit of a better angle for you guys. I'm going to plug in my adapter now. Should hear the solenoid click once we get power. You heard it go a few times because I did it slow. So we got power going to it. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of get the air flowing through the line. So I'm going to do quite a few bubbles just to pressurize the system and everything. Because it does take quite a bit of pressure to push through that air stone, or excuse me, through that diffuser in the tank. So... Just enough to get it to bubble, which I'll bring you over here real fast. You can see the diffuser there, and you can actually see it's getting ready to start making bubbles. I watched the water get pushed out of the diffuser, so it's coming here in just a second. Just like that, we got bubbles. Obviously, those are way too big. You want to have nice, tiny, very small micro bubbles. Some of those which are which, but this is a new diffuser, so it's going to have to get waterlogged a little bit for those micro bubbles to be exactly where we want them. Um, but for now, it'll work just to kind of get the system primed. And I did turn it down quite a bit, so those are going to slow down, as you can see. And uh, we'll fine tune it here in just a second. So with my needle valve here, you can see I can control how many bubbles per second we get, hence the bubble counter. Um, basic aquariums, you're going to want to start at about one bubble per second with highlight medium light, whatever. You don't want to overdo it, especially on you know tanks with livestock and stuff. You can really um, end up harming fish. So what I'm going to kind of do is watch my timer on the video camera here as I do bubbles to kind of get that. For me, personally, I, I've, I'm experienced with CO2, so I'm going to start off at about a half a bubble per second. Um, or, well, yeah, whatever you want to call it. And uh, kind of fine tune it in that area. Like I said, one bubble per second is kind of where you want to start, but I know that this tank doesn't have the 
absolute extreme amount of light that it needs to completely handle one drop per second or one bubble per second. So I'm going to go for one bubble per two seconds basically. It's kind of boring, so I'll just let you assume that I got it right. Okay, so as you see, we got about bubble every two seconds going. That's where I want to start out with this tank. Yeah, we got a little bit of a mess of airline, but that's okay. It's going to do its job. I'm trying to just, I guess, tuck it in back here. I don't really mind how it looks. We're not going for showroom quality here. We're going for functionality and what the heck I want. Um, as you can see here, we do got a bit of a finer mist now, too as well as this power head kind of pushing everything back down. You want those bubbles to stay in the law in the water as long as physically possible. Um, so when they come up, if you can push them back down, obviously that's ideal. But I kind of want to have this up a little bit because we do need to have some surface agitation to keep that oxygen exchange going um, to have as much carbon dioxide in the water as possible. You want to find that nice happy medium. So without giving away too much oxygen exchange as well, because then we're going to just be wasting uh, CO2 at that point, so I'm going to do it about right there. I'd say that's enough. We don't have very many animals in here. Maybe a little bit more up. And the water level is going to come down too, so that should be good. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it with the system here. Obviously, uh, I want to state a couple more things before we go, but that's pretty much how simple it is to set up. It takes a little bit of time and obviously I've done this quite often so I know you know certain tricks and stuff to it. Um, hopefully you picked up on a couple things when it comes to setting up this system. I know I learn something new every time. And yeah, it's uh, it's tiring to go through it all that quick but we did it and uh, I'm excited to see how this tank turns out with the CO2 injection we've added. One thing I do want to state is a lot of people have issues with timing and stuff on CO2. I like to personally, if you're running an automatic system or if you manually turn your lights on and all that stuff, whatever it might be, uh, it's applicable both ways. Your CO2 should turn on one hour before your lights turn on. And the reason for that is plants, can, plants cannot photosynthesize CO2 without a light source. Whatever type of chemistry that is, I don't know. All I know is that the plants cannot absorb this CO2 unless you have a light source. So meaning that by having the light off one hour before the CO2 turns on, the CO2 is going to be running for an hour, hitting that 30 ppm in the water column, and you'll have that maximum CO2 in the water before the light turns on. If you have them both turn on at the same time, it's never going to be able to get up to that level because it doesn't have time to hit its peak. So really, once you turn on that light, that's what opens the gateway for the CO2 to continue flowing without... Um, over toxifying the tank or oversaturating the water column, if that makes sense. There's a lot more behind it, and we'll get into that another day. But have the lights turn on an hour after your CO2 has been on. So, first, uh, here I'll give you the schedule CO2 on, one hour after CO2 on, lights on. Then at the end of the shift, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, excuse me, CO2 off, and then one hour later, light off. You have to have that light on for one hour after your CO2 has been off in order for the plants to fully absorb that CO2. And that way it doesn't sit in the tank all night and just wander there. Um, you want all that CO2 to be gone by the end of the night. So have that uh, CO2 system shut down one hour before the lights do. Again, just so you know, make this super simple for you guys. CO2 on one hour before lights. CO2 off one hour before lights. It's a reverse to the to the start of the day. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys out. I hope uh, this could be entertaining for you guys watching me struggle. I know it is for me sometimes watching these videos back. I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, what did I say and what did I do? Yeah, that's who I am. That's uh, what we did. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys can leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff, whatever you want to comment about. I don't care, it could be anything fish related to anything. Uh, we can talk about the moon. I really don't care. just want to see you guys engage and uh, enjoy my videos. Let me know if you are enjoying them. Let me know what you want to see. Of course, I say that every time. Some of you do, majority you don't, but that's all right. I'm doing what I enjoy uh, no matter what. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.